recently on the balcony, which is 7.40 on BBC Two. And Peter Cushing is our guest of the morning. <clears throat> he must have been one of the very few of the great actors that you haven't acted with. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> one of them that I have, yes, to admire greatly. Mm -hmm. You went out to Hollywood um, when you were pretty young. How did, you, how did a, a, an English lad find his way out to the west coast of America in those days? I mean, now we take it for granted with jet travel and all the rest mm -hmm. of it, but it was quite an expedition then. I swam. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd always wanted to go ever since I saw Tom Mix, who was the sort of the John Wayne cowboy star of my boyhood. And... Um, Eventually, after, this is too long a story to go into now, but eventually my father paid my fare one way, which has always worried me rather. <laughs> but uh, uh, I just went out there on spec. No one knew me except my parents, you sooner. Know. But um, I did, I had extraordinary luck in as much, well, I, did, I say luck, it was a terrible thing that happened because almost as soon as I got there, the war broke out. Uh, and therefore it was a dearth of Englishmen until I was called up or called back again. I got quite a number of small roles in pictures, and having never been in a film studio before, it was a um, very useful beginning for a career in pictures. And that uh, career didn't start with horror movies. I mean, as Frank was observing earlier on, although your reputation now is from making, what, 20 horror movies, for a long time you were playing any role that was going from oh, Shakespeare absolutely. right through to... Yes, I think it's just that, uh, as I said earlier, that if you are associated with one, one kind of picture, it's very difficult for producers really to see you in any other light because it's a very commercial business and if, you, if something you've appeared in has been financially successful, they don't like to sort of possibly change the luck by putting you, say, into comedy or something like that, whereas uh, nearly everything I did on television and in the theatre was comedy. Well, there's a great new horror movie of yours coming out on Thursday. We'll talk about that later on. Meanwhile, let's go over to the horrendous weather. How horrendous is it, Francis? Oh, it's not too bad. The latest film, House of the Long Shadows, opens on Thursday. And, of course, it's the latest in a long line of Cushing horror films, but the first one ever to co-star those other masters of the horror movies, uh, Vincent Price, Christopher Lee, and John Carradine, they're all involved in a classic Gothic thriller, which is set in a Gothic castle. <laughs> Mr. Grisbane? Mr. Corrigan. Mr. Corrigan, please, please think what you are doing. We were going to free him at midnight tonight. That was the reason for our return. We were going to free him. Is there a key? Is there a Well, it is uh, really a formidable collection of spine-chilling characters, isn't it? Did you enjoy working with them again? Oh, very much indeed, yes. Three dear friends and so professional yes. to work with. Uh, Mac Phelps from South Wales has, has phoned in to say, will you tell him a little bit more about the film? He's obviously a horror movie fan. It's a little difficult to tell you much about the picture without giving the game away, but it's, it's based loosely upon an old film made before the war, I think with Richard Dix, called The Seven Keys to Baldpate. And it deals with a family who return to their ancestral home. And uh, it's in the wake of Christopher Lee, Vincent Price, John Carradine and myself. And, um, the goings on yeah. are not quite unlike the home life of our dear queen, I'm afraid. <laughs> what do you think, Peter, the, the ingredients are for that? I mean, you're sitting watching a horror movie, and there's that wonderful moment when the old spine goes like that, and the sort of quiver goes mm. up. You, is there a kind of formula for putting together something that is subtly like that? Well, of course, the famous one was the, the in, in um, the, when the uh, uh, chap came out of the graveyard in Pip in, I can't think of the Dickensian film it was, it's, the name's escaped. One of the Frankensteins? No, or, no, the, no? It, was, it was a David Lean picture. Yeah. But um, 
It's awfully difficult to see it's been done so much. I really don't know what the formula is, but I think it's always to take people by surprise. Yeah. You don't want to scare them, but you, it's rather like going down a roller coaster. You know yeah. you're going to come up safely the other side. But I don't think there's really a formula. Yeah. It's just because there are times when, you know, the audience... I mean, my wife disappears behind her seat because she knows <laughs> something. Is, is, you, you know that feeling, yeah. don't you? Of course, roller coasters are fun, though, and I, I wonder if it's fun making horror on set. Well, uh, as, we, as I said earlier, I think fun I always equate with uh, things like roller coasters or having a good time with no cares in the world. Whereas making films I would never call fun. I enjoy the work and enjoy the challenge of work. But it's too much at stake really to sort of uh, uh, have what the word fun really means. The, 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 the Gothic place, we've got uh, near where we live, uh, we call it the spooky house. It's now been sort of uh, pizzazzed up a little bit and it's a hotel. But um, they made a lot of uh, Hammer films, I'm sure you... Oh, on, on, on the, Studios. That's right. Oh, yeah. That wonderful yes, old Victorian yes, yes, confection. Yes, it's very yes. posh now. It's a hotel. Yes. Oh, is it? But did you make Hammer films there? Yes, indeed. Use it for many locations. Because you've got to have some kind of Victorian spooky place. Yes, 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 yes. A real joy with which you said, oh, yes, we use that for many horrendous locations. <laughs> you know, um, can I just have, we, uh, have you on one moment? You may just... say precisely what you wish, I guess. <laughs> it's only having been here since six, I know all of you have been here since about three. Do you ever feel like that marvellous, if you'll forgive the most dreadful impersonation, that uh, Snorri Durante was invited out to an early morning shoot at the crack of dawn and he was seen bringing up the little rear, slapping all the trees and saying, when I'm awake, no boy's gonna sleep. 